to go for a second together, but he put that song right there, and as we're singing the song, since we've been here for the six years we've been here, we've always, the Lord has always led me to break away from the structure, organization, church has to be done this way. You do it as the Lord leads you to do it. And he's, he's worked on me, and he's, he's refined that, and he continues to work on me, and I don't know if I'll ever get it right. <laughs> but he continues to, to show me things. And so beginning in 2019, and I can go back, and I went back um, last, and went back. I still have every, every lead sheet. This is what we call a lead sheet. is the very first page in our songbook, and it basically has the songs that we're doing and what key we play them in. Well, I went to Life College, I have every one that we've ever done. From the very beginning, from January the 27th, of 2013 to the day, I have every one that we've ever done. I've kept them all. I went back and I was looking at them last week or the week before and how we were orchestrated. When, when, we have, when I first would do them, I would have three songs in the offering or one song and announcements, two songs, offering, da 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 The Lord over time has told me just you don't need to be that structured. You can relax and you can do it whenever I tell you to do it. Amen. Well, that's taken a long time. It's taken six years <laughs> to get to the place where the Lord started showing me the beginning of this year. Even up until December, I broke the songs down, morning service and evening service. And you all know that. We had the morning service and we did the same songs on both morning services. Then we did a different set of songs in the evening. And the Lord says, if Bonnie has taught me, we, uh, he just gives me a certain number of songs and I put them on there and we do as many as he leads me to do. Amen. Now maybe we do three and then we do the offering, but whenever we're going and he says, okay, now do the offering, then we do that then. And then he, now we might do seven, we might do eight, might do nine, might just do music the whole morning. Who knows? See, I don't know. I don't have to. I don't have to. And it's such a, a more relaxed life when we allow God to do things because on his time, he does it when it's just right. And we can just relax and say, we're just going to play, praise the Lord until he says, okay, now preach. And he's done that after two or three songs. If you've been here very long, you know there's been times on the third or fourth song, the Lord says, okay, now's the time for the message. And so as we're going into 2019 and coming into a new year, I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. I have decided that whatever it is that he calls us to do and how he tells us to do it is how we do it. Every time we get together, not just as an orchestrated, oh, this is the way we do it because that's the way you're by us. us. And we just want to do it the way that the Lord would lead us to do it. So, um, how much more we're going to do? I don't know. <laughs> you know as well as I do, whatever the Lord tells, tells us to do is what's the best thing to do. Amen? Amen. So we're just going to go ahead and go on and do it all. Here we go.
excited about what all is going on, what God's going to do. And we're just more excited to be be there and be with Him when He does it. Amen? Amen. There's a lot of things in life, you know, we there's a lot of different things that we experience in our lifetimes. And we talk about a lot of them, and the Bible teaches about a lot of them. But you know, life, as, as we get older, we began to experience, I look at my grandkids and, 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 at my, and then at my children and, and I look at how they're, re, how they're reacting to the world and how I reacted when I was their age and, and watching how things transpire in our life and have come to the realization that, that as, we, as we grow and as we gain knowledge and we gain understanding what little we can get from the world, we begin to realize that life is a lot more detailed than we thought. Life has a whole lot more going on, life is a lot deeper you know, I had to love my Uncle Jack. I talked about Uncle Jack. He's still in the, in the rehab center in California. And he had told me that he, he, when he was in his, first got into his 80s, he's 90, what is he, 88 now, I think. But um, when he first got into his 80s, he said, I really didn't anticipate living this long. I really didn't think I would be around. And he played music all his life, and he'd gotten to where his left hand, he couldn't really articulate his fingers good enough to play music anymore. He said, I really didn't think that I would be around long enough to experience the things that I'm experiencing. And, and that's something that's always stuck with me when he was telling me that. That's been a few years back. But, but we, you know, we, we, we began to see life in a different perspective. And that's what we talk about a lot, is getting, getting the proper perspective on life, the proper idea 
of how things, we have goals and we have ideas that, of achievements that we've made in our life that, that are good, but, but as we do that, we realize that life is a lot deeper than I thought. There's a lot more to it, a lot more going on, and I have a lot more to do with how it turns out than I realize. And you know, we, we do things, we get in a place where we just, we're, we're creatures of habit. We learn, we learn habits and we create habits in our life and we get in a place where we, there, there's just things we do just without even really thinking about it. And I, I was thinking about this, this you know, to, to get in the vehicle and to drive the Casa Grand, how many times have you gotten to the light and you're not really sure which way you were going to go? Am I going to go Jimmy Kerr? Am I going to go 10? Am I going to go 8? <laughs> and you just kind of pick one randomly. Well, it really doesn't matter. And then, you know, when you get when you get over and you get on I-10 and you go down I-10, you're like, oh, I was going to go in on Trekkle because I was going to go over here. But, you know, we, we just randomly do things without really stopping to think about it. How many times do you, you know, get to Castle Grand and... I've done this, I did this last week, I, was, I had to go here, I had to go there, and I, had a, and I knew I had a whole lot of things I needed to pick up at Walmart. And I get to Walmart and I can't remember one thing I needed to go in there and get. <laughs> I'm like, why am I even here? <laughs> Obviously it wasn't anything that important. And I began to understand why they made the online order thing at home, because when you're home, you know, okay, this is what I need, y'all remember. <laughs> When I get there, you have it for me. But, but we do, we get in it, we get in, in such a routine and, and such a habitual thing that, that our life just becomes a lot of the things that we do are just routine. And, and there's things that we do in this in this habit forming life that we live, there's things that we do that we really, if we took time to think about it, that we wouldn't do. If we really stopped and think or thought about it, there's things that we just do without even thinking and, and if we really stopped to think about it, we wouldn't do those things. And one of the things I'm talking about, a little phrase that comes up. Uh, from time to time, and nobody, I don't know of anybody that intentionally does this, is taking something for credit. You know, we, we don't, we don't, well, okay, I want to get up today, and taking something for granted by definition is fail to properly appreciate someone or something, especially as a result of over -familiar, familiarity with it, or assume that something is true without questioning it. Now we get in a habit of doing things and, and we just we don't we don't get up in the morning and say, okay, I want to go out here and I'm gonna take this and this and this, and I'm just gonna take it for granted. We don't we don't aspire to do that, we don't plan to do that. It's just because we, we get in a routine of doing things and, and our habits take us to the place that we just do it, we, we take things for granted really without even thinking about it. How many times have you got a, out of church on Sunday, come to church on Sunday morning, got home that afternoon and thought, you know what? I got my bulletin, I want to get it out, and I want to go through the scriptures that was in the, the sermon this morning. I'm just going to really kind of make sure that I get a, I got a good a good explanation from the Lord what the pastor was talking about. Because it's not up to me to, to tell you, it's up to me to bring the scripture that the Lord gives me, but it's up to you to refine it for yourself. It says, the study you show yourself approved. Go to 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we know, we all know verse 15, but I want to read 11 through 15. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. <laughs> if we believe not, yet abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance. Charge them before the Lord that they strive not about the words to no profit, but to subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. So in this last week, two or three different occasions after this was all given to me, that I had an opportunity to meet with somebody that talked about visiting a different church or going here and there. This person was teaching that, this person was teaching that. And I was thinking about somebody that works in the bank. And they have to learn to recognize counterfeit money. Now, when Jamie worked at the bank, I thought they would teach you what counterfeit money looks like. They don't. They teach you what real money looks like. Amen. So when the counterfeit comes along, you recognize it. Well, if we, don't, if we don't take God's word, if we don't study it, if we don't learn it, if we don't know what it is, when the counterfeit comes along, we won't know it. Mm -hmm. We'll be too, too able or too not so much willing, 
but unknowingly receiving something that's not true. I had a guy call me this week. He sent me a deal on, on my phone and says, oh, look at this. Have you seen this? It was one of those propaganda deals on, on, on YouTube or somewhere about, uh, about if you don't worship on Saturday, you're not going to get into heaven and on and on and on. And it, it scared him. And he called me, and I need to see you, Pastor. And so he comes down to the, down the church, and I meet him here. And he comes in, and he says, did you see that deal I sent you? I said, no. I don't need to look at it. Why not? I said, because you told me it made you afraid. And I know where fear comes from. Mm -hmm. And fear doesn't come from the Lord. That's right. Amen. So when you see something, or when you hear something, or when something comes along, that's your automatic instinct, that's your, your reaction automatically by your spirit, whether you know it or whether you're not. If you live with him, he lives within you. And he acknowledges those things and he gives us the wherewithal to be able to say, hmm, if it's making me afraid, something's wrong. But see, we get so, we get so, in such a routine of things, we, we, we just, it, it catches our interest. And then they read the whole thing. And he said, well, they, they took scripture right out of the Bible. I said, oh yeah, they're good at it. They can pop a couple scriptures out of there that will say that say whatever they needed to say to convince you that what they're telling you is right. But if you don't know what's right, if you haven't studied, if you haven't learned the word of God and buried it in your heart and lived within him, that's, you're, it's not going to strike you as odd. The Bible says that in the last days many will be deceived if it were possible, even the very elect. We have to study, we have to, we have to step away from that just doing things habitually all the time and not thinking about it. We have to come to a place, the, the Bible tells us to take every thought captive. Don't just react to something. Don't just do something because that's the way you've always done it. <laughs> like I could come up here and, and very easily do one song announcements, two songs offering, three songs scriptures, four songs, boom, we're out of here. And that's how we started out and that's what we did and that's the way I was taught and that's the way it was done everywhere else I've ever been. And the Lord says, no. <clears throat> You have to allow me to lead you. If you're going to study my word, if you're going to understand my word, then you have to, you have to allow me to lead you through everything, every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. The Lord gave me that like two weeks ago. If you'll do this one thing, every aspect of your life will improve. Wow. And then you begin to wonder, well, can he really... Improve every aspect of my life. I'm here to tell you he can. I'm here to tell you he'll improve things that you didn't even know he was in, he was in, interested in. And he knows your heart. And if we begin to be obedient to him and, and look for his word and, 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 and realize that he's living within me, and the things that I do, I do because he's orchestrated every aspect of my life. Everything that comes my way was because he was there. And the more obedient I am to him, and the more that I do that he calls me to do, the more he blesses me, the more he shows me his grace, the more he shows me his glory, the more he shows me he's involved in every aspect of my life. He told me emotionally, physically, financially, um, uh, maritally, uh, materially, every, every aspect of your life I can touch. And he can, and he will. I'll just give you a little insight into how glorious God is. This is just, it was something that happened to me yesterday. It was just amazing to me. And I stood there in the midst of hundreds of people and watched God do something that only God could do. 